Good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to have you here for our session. We're going to have uh, 20 minutes just to talk about delivering OpenStack Cloud that's fit for an enterprise environment. My name's Mark Smith. I'm from SUSE. Uh, this is um, Simon Briggs, also from SUSE. He's going to do the brave and clever piece later, which is the live demo uh, of some of what we're going to talk about. What we'd like to do to start with is just share with you some market research um, of IT professionals' opinions about OpenStack and private cloud, just to validate some of the things that we heard in the keynote sessions that were on um, yesterday. And a couple of things we just wanted to uh, call out. First of all, the popularity of OpenStack as a private cloud uh, platform. Well, I think we all understand that, but from our research, 81% of large corporations were either moving to OpenStack or had already moved to OpenStack. Uh, that's a big number, and it gets echoed from other uh, community studies and even, even from the, uh, the user survey about how popular um, OpenStack is. Why is it so popular? Well, it's about saving costs. It's about agility. Uh, it's about innovation. Um, what we also found is that 96% of IT professionals were now at the point where they were prepared to trust their mission critical or business critical workloads to a cloud environment and their preferred choice was a private cloud. Now that's not always the context that we talk about OpenStack in. We, we talk about it more as being a development platform for new web-based workloads. Um, but as it matures, it's becoming more than that. So. Uh, just let's take a moment to talk about um, IT challenges in almost all businesses. What are, we, what are we having to cope with? What are we trying to achieve? You will recall in uh, the keynote yesterday, Gartner spoke about bimodal IT. Uh, they spoke about OpenStack being perfect for uh, faster response, uh, about innovative new workload web-based development. Well, that's all about running faster. Um, fitting the needs of the business, dealing with customer requirements, market and competitive challenges, uh, being quick to respond to what's happening around us. Data center transformation is actually about what happens to the bulk of our IT. Um, how can we gain greater efficiency with what we have already invested with? Now, not necessarily the heartland of what you would expect from uh, an OpenStack deployment, but actually, it fits really well into that. We're going to talk a little bit about fitting OpenStack into an enterprise environment. And the thing that all of us are trying to do is control budgets, right? We have to do more with the same or more with less. How many of us have a blank check for our IT projects? Probably no hands, right? Certainly, uh, certainly we don't. So we're trying to do all of those things. OpenStack helps us with all of those areas. But I want to just spend a, a moment telling you a little bit about SUSE OpenStack Cloud uh, and why it's different. So first of all, with OpenStack, you can, you can do it yourself. You can take the upstream code. Uh, that's a good thing to do. We're certainly not wishing to discourage anyone from doing that. That's about learning and developing skills. It can be complicated. Uh, most of us in an IT world as users for instance, um, if we buy a car, we don't normally build it ourselves, do we? We, we want to drive it out the showroom. We want to use it for what we need it for immediately. And that's um, well, driving from one place to another, enjoying the, the ride, getting some benefit from it. So normally we go for a pre-built solution. Uh, we, we look for quality, reliability, performance, top class service, maintenance, support, and excellent value. Uh, we want to get the best from our investment. Well, that's really what SUSE OpenStack Cloud does uh, for our customers. We pre-build, harden the code, uh, get you up and running really quickly. The typical kind of conversation I have with customers is about um, they've tried it themselves, they found it complicated, they come to SUSE, we get them up and running quickly, they start de developing and deploying workloads really, really quickly. So it's all about taking the pain from an open stack deployment, starting to get the benefits in your business really, really quickly. 
we do do things a little differently. So here's what really becomes, I guess, the, the foundation of a software-defined data center through, uh, through OpenStack. First of all, uh, SUSE OpenStack Cloud uses the Crowbar uh, deployment framework. Now, why do we do that? Well, it allows us to give a flexible but very, very fast, slick um, installation and deployment process. Now, just a, a, a proof point on that. Those of us that have been at multiple OpenStack summits will recall that Intel used to run, used to run uh, a rule of stack competition, which was about how to stand up a, a cloud environment as quickly as possible, and then how to build in sophistication, how to make it uh, a true OpenStack cloud experience. So building in high availability, looking at migrations. They gave time bonuses and uh, time penalties for including more or including less. SUSE won that competition every single summit that it was run. And uh, back at the last summit in Tokyo, we, we worked with Intel to run a session to tell everybody else how to win the Rule the Stack competition. So quick and easy deployment. Uh, we build in the widest hypervisor support possible. So we don't just support KVM for new web-based workload development. We also support Zen, Hyper-V, VMware, and because of custom demand, we've also built in support for uh, ZVM. So uh, building in support for, for Z Systems mainframe into an OpenStack cloud environment. Now, why are we doing that? Well, that's because the mode one IT environment, the existing IT environment, can then be brought into the cloud when it's the right time for the business to do it in addition to all of the new workload developments. We build in high availability. I will demonstrate that in a second. Uh, we were the first to automate the installation of high availability for the control nodes. We've now extended that to high availability for the compute nodes. Um, we, uh, because we have been in open source software for 20 years, we have the widest interoperability for hardware, um, uh, software workloads, to give you a good experience, and we can support the whole stack from the, uh, the guest and the host operating systems and including the, the OpenStack layer. We also have built in a more business-oriented release cycle. Now, for a lot of our users, rip and replace every six months, uh, that doesn't work from a business perspective. So we've built in a, um, a longer release cycle. So we release every year and we build in non-disruptive upgrades for customers. If they need extra functionality from a release that hasn't yet uh, uh, come out from, a, from a, an OpenStack release, we'll work with them to incorporate that functionality. So the intention is to build an enterprise-grade OpenStack distribution that works for the end user, fills their needs. Now, I mentioned about the fast and easy deployment and management, and I mentioned about the high availability. What we'd like to do is just switch modes slightly here, and I'll invite Simon to do the, the clever and the dangerous bit and do a live demo of those two um, items of functionality for you. So I'll hand over to Simon. Hi, everyone. Thanks for your time. Um, so I'm Simon Briggs. Uh, I work with Mark on the technology stack, and I've got a small demonstration sitting on this laptop. You may not have recognized it when you look to the top of the stage, but I've actually got enough RAM in here to run a data center, okay? So the virtual technology obviously allows me to run the uh, management platform from SUSE for our OpenStack cloud uh, technology uh, across virtual machines. And what I'll do first is uh, move across uh, to uh, my virtual servers. So you can see here with a list, I've got a series of elements Okay, so I've got what's called an admin server. So an admin server is our uh, instrumentation platform. It's the platform where the crowbar and chef technology resides from our packaging tool to then b help you build the infrastructure into a cloud in the background. Then I've got uh, actually two um, control nodes, so uh, one and two listed here and um, a couple of compute nodes. And I've brought them up uh, into a cloud, and I've started my controller nodes on the right-hand side, and they're booting up. So 
This is an illustration of the working dashboard you get within Crowbar um, and the ability for it to be able to um, give you instant warnings on a traffic light signal uh, layer um, as to what's happening. And in typical demo style, I've just looked across and seen a red light hitting my screen, uh, which wasn't meant to happen. So uh, we're, we're having the joys. Obviously, this morning, we didn't sacrifice enough chickens to the demo gods. Um, so I have been running this for the last four hours, no problem. And uh, it seems to have bitten me uh, quite hard. So those services are up there. I've, I've got a compute node. Um, but from this screen, we're able to um, show you that we're able to take a virtual machine that's empty. So here I'm illustrating you plugging in bare metal in your data center. You want to instrument that bare metal into your cloud infrastructure. Um, and you just literally turn on that bare metal within the network environment set up um, for the SUSE cloud. Of course, it's set up to Pixie Boot. You can see here that on my admin node, I have a Pixie Boot environment. I have a build environment, which then drives down a copy of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server onto those machines. They, um, in the background, this machine will start building up a small instance of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. And what that allows us to do then is pick it up in our Crowbar dashboard, and we're able to instrument that node once it becomes available. So I'll just actually reboot the node that says it's bright red. I probably haven't got enough time uh, for it to come back, but I can at least do that. So I'll just quickly restart my node in the background, try and take that horrible red flashing screen. But whilst I've been doing that, you'll see that on the left-hand side automatically, a new MAC address has been signaled. So that's my virtual machine that's booted up. Now, what, what do I don't want to do with it then? I want to drive down a personality onto that machine within the cloud. It can either be a compute node, so virtualization resource, it can be a storage node, or it could be a networking node. So uh, to do that, very simply, I'm able to go across. He's come back with a red light. Uh, that really is uh, fun of the fair. Um, Give me a second. We're going to see some hacking um, in the background. So Sometimes you just feel it's not your day, don't you? Um, so. If I then um, take that machine and, and work on it, um, I can come down here and edit that node. So it's bare metal at the moment. It's got a very small instance, a kernel on there that then allows us to register. And I can start giving it some personality. So I'm going to call this one Dave, if I, as I've got a good friend called Dave. And the server reminds me of him. So um, I can also there, under the role, decide whether it's going to be a compute node. So I know it's a compute node. I'm also going to instrument a Docker server. So obviously, everyone in the OpenStack world is very enthused by the power of Docker, what it can bring to us. So I'm going to set up Docker on my SUSE Linux Enterprise server to run virtual resources into my cloud. To do that, I want to be able to run it on the, the ButterFS file system which is just one of the file systems supported under SUSE, it's a, a unique offering of ours. Um, and then I can allocate the node. And it's come up giving me an instruction here that that's been successfully allocate, allocated. OK, that re green, red light keeps staring at me, which isn't very nice. Um, but that node has now got a personality. And in the background, if I show you what's happening, that machine is just booted into the standard kernel. Over the next few minutes, what's going to happen is my admin server is going to drive down the extra operating system, the full operating system, with all the software required from OpenStack to run it as a compute node within your cloud. This is all reinforcing the fact that SUSE's kind of key um, methodology process in delivering our solution 
is to make it as easy as possible to get to the value of the cloud in the background. The Crowbar platform is very flexible. Um, you can not only use the GUI as is, you can also instrument um, bringing in external drivers from third parties who've released some code which is fully supported against the APIs in OpenStack. And you, you can deliver that very simply because not only is it a standard GUI platform, it also gives you the ability to inject code into there. So it's a simple case of instrumenting those drivers and you're able to then allocate that resource down onto the machines, into the cloud. Um, so that machine now has gone solid yellow. It's working in the background. This is where I need to learn to tap dance while my controller node's down. It, uh, it is causing me some headaches, I'm afraid. Um, whilst that's the case. So it's giving me more details about what's happening on that node all the time. So um, as you can see there, as a compute node within an OpenStack um, environment, it needs certain capabilities being pushed down from Crowbar as technology plugins. And in the background, it's just sitting there waiting to go. Let me do a quick re-attempt at my hack. Maybe accelerate it. It's not playing ball at all. OK, so on the SUSE booth, which is number, can we flick to B28? I'm afraid I'm giving in. There's too many problems in my demo. So if you'd like to join us at B28, we'll be more than happy to show you the technology. Luckily, it's running on a series of small factor Intel boxes, the small NUCs that you can get. Uh, and there's a series of boxes networked together, so we're very sure that we'll be able to deliver uh, the illustration of the highly available cloud that um, can show you the power of what SUSE OpenStack is able to bring to you to get a cloud up and working very rapidly, and then from a standard platform become extensible as all clouds grow, you'd be able to grow through the SUSE OpenStack technology. Okay? So thank you very much for your time. Sorry about the little hitches that we had. Um, I'll go and shoot myself later, or Mark's got a gun, so that'll be fine. Cheers.